All right, welcome back. So last time we discussed the sample mean as a random variable and we used it to give estimates for the population mean. This time we're going to take a look at the sample variance as a random variable and try to understand its distribution. So like we saw before, if you have a normally distributed population, then the sample mean is also a normally distributed random variable. And this gave us a useful way for taking the sample mean and using it to estimate the population mean, knowing something about its distribution. For the variance, we're going to see that if the population is normally distributed, then the sample variance can be described in terms of a chi-square random variable. And we'll then be able to use that to estimate the population variance. So we might have seen the chi-squared before in a probability course. It's a particular case of a gamma random variable, and uh, we're going to find it a useful thing. So first, I'm going to give a more precise statement of the distribution which describes the sample variance and see how we can use that to estimate the population variance. Afterwards, I'll say a few things about chi-squared variables in general, and we'll get a feeling for why they actually come up in this context of sample variances. Okay, so what's the plot here? So suppose we have some population which is described by a normal distribution um, with some mean mu and variance sigma squared. And uh, suppose we have n independently chosen samples, uh, x1 through xn, with this, uh, um, with this distribution. Then um, as we were doing before, um, it might be interesting to study the sample mean and its distribution. So, um, so we know that the sample mean um, had a normal distribution uh, with mean mu and, uh, and uh, standard deviation sigma root n, or sigma divided by root n. And what we got then was that um, this particular uh, combination, um, sigma divided by root n, this is a standard normal variable. So it's a variable whose distribution we can look up on some table. And because we, um, because we can do that, um, we can use that information to understand this numerator in particular, the difference between, between the sample mean and the population mean. And that gave us uh, the ability to see how accurate our sample mean was as uh, as for predicting the, um, the population mean. So we'd like to do a similar thing for, um, for the variance. So we're going to use this uh, same assumption. We have normally distributed, we have these n samples, but now we're going to look at the, um, the statistic S squared, the um, sample variance. And um, so what we would like to do is understand how it compares to the population variance. So like before with the, um, with the sample mean, um, we had this, uh, you know, really it was the fact that we could describe the, um, the sample mean via a normal variable. And in particular, this particular combination of its relationship with mu is described by a standard normal variable. We want something similar for the um, population, for the sample variance. And it turns out, so the answer, that if we look at this particular combination, n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared, then this is a variable with a, with a name that we can look up in a chart. This is a, well, a nicely uh, defined uh, random variable. This always has a, um, a chi-square uh, distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So this is called um, chi-square uh, distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So um, now, OK, so we're going to go into a bit more detail about that. What is this uh, chi-square random variable with n minus 1 degrees of freedom? I mean, just a quick summary is that um, the chi squared n minus one is a particular um, example of a uh, gamma variable, particular um, gamma variable. So remember the, the gamma distribution of these two parameters, alpha and beta, that's how we were doing it at least. 
uh, for us, alpha will be n minus two and beta is two. So for example, the moment generating function for the chi-square uh, with n minus one degrees of freedom is one minus uh, two t to the minus n over two. Um, but okay, so it's this distribution that we've, um, that we've seen before, at least we've seen distributions of this type. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how we identify this as this particular exponential distribution. But um, for right now, let's just skip ahead and think about what that actually does to help us understand the, um, the population variance. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of how you would uh, use this. Now, I'm gonna do my best to think of better examples, but for right now, we're going to, we're in a widget factory and we're checking on the uh, length of our widgets. And we're checking to see if our widget producer is producing a fairly uniform uh, length of widgets or whether or not there's a lot of variation in the lengths or, or whatever. So we have, a, we have a limited time, so we go into the factory and we grab 10 widgets. So n equals 10, we, we sample, uh, n equals 10. And let's assume, just for the sake of, of argument right now, that the lengths of widgets is normally distributed. So for example, if that wasn't a reasonable assumption, you know, we might, you know, a, a variation on this problem would be like, instead of picking one widget, maybe you're picking boxes of, you know, of a hundred widgets and you're looking at the average length in the box. And then the, the average length of the box is gonna be a pretty close to normally distributed random variable with a central limit there. But let's, let's just forget about that for a moment. We're, we, get, we're, we have some normally distributed population. Um, we're checking the length of our widgets. We grab 10 widgets and we find that our sample variance, S squared, is five. And so we wonder, well, how, you know, is it, um, you know, how, how small could the, uh, could the variance uh, actually, um, you know, how, how, how big could it actually be? Like, okay, so is it possible, question, um, how likely is it that, um, for example, the actual variance uh, sigma squared is at least two? Okay, this is maybe a slightly random question. So we're saying, like, um, is it possible that we're at least, if, if, I, if I'm seeing five, you know, a variation of like five in my sample, is it possible that the variance overall? is uh, at least reasonably large, is at least two, right? It seems pretty likely. So let's, but let's um, see what that actually means, right? So what we're going to use is the fact, so we know that if we look at, um, at S squared divided by sigma squared, and we multiply that by nine being n minus one, then this is a chi-square random variable with nine degrees of freedom. Okay, and what are we trying to calculate? So we're trying to calculate, um, well, so now let's, let's um, kind of abstract this a little bit so we actually have something that makes sense. Um, saying this post-factually that we've sampled and we get five is harder to think of it because uh, in, the, in the right way because this capital S squared is really the random variable and we want to talk about a probability having to do with that random variable. So because the chi-squared tells us about these uh, ratios, I'm gonna phrase my question in terms of a ratio. So I'm gonna ask, what's the probability um, that the actual variance um, is at least, well, instead of saying at least two, what I'm gonna say is at least um, two fifths of my measured value of S squared. So my actual measured value happened to be five, but let's put that aside for a moment and say like, um, in general, like how likely is it that, you know, that, that the ratio of these um, is, you know, um, that, that sigma is greater than or equal to uh, two fifths S squared. Okay, so let's, so this is a question we can ask and rephrase in terms of our chi-square distribution, right? 
So if I take this and I um, go ahead and uh, divide and rearrange a little bit, so what do we get? We get five halves greater than or equal to S squared over uh, sigma squared, and same probability. And that in turn is uh, multiplying both sides by nine. So nine times five over two greater than or equal to nine S squared over sigma squared. And the benefit of doing that is now I have my chi-square variable. So that's the probability that um, 45 halves, uh, 22 and a half, uh, is bigger than or equal to um, the chi-square with nine degrees of freedom. Okay. So now the advantage of this is we can like, um, you know, flip to the back of our favorite statistics book and look it up and see, you know, or ask, I don't know, Wolfram Alpha or something or whatever, um, what this probability actually is. And you look it up on a chart and you see that it's about uh, 0.995. Okay, just because I happen to look it up. So um, I think it's, it's roughly that. Anyway, so there's like a 99 and a half percent chance that saying that the actual variance is at least um, two fifths of the measured variance. So this is, you know, so there's a 0.995 per, oh, sorry, a 99.5 percent chance that the um, that the measured um, that the sample variance, sorry, that the that the population variance is at least two fifths of the sample variance uh, if you have a sample size of 10. And, um, and so that helps us uh, you know, keep track of the length of our widgets. Okay, there's an example.